Is Colorado going to the Big 12? It looks like Colorado's going to go to the Big 12. Uncle Dennis, Dennis Dodd to you, Uncle Dennis to me, uh, he's been all over the story for quite a while. Even when some people push back on Uncle Dennis, Uncle Dennis has been pretty steadfast on this. So, so good for him. We go to the same barber. I see him there like, like you know, once every other week. Good to see Uncle Dennis. So Colorado to the Big 12. Now, this is not done. If you misunderstood me there, and if you misunderstood me, it's probably because I misstated it. It's not done. It's just being reported strongly that talks are happening and there could be wheels in motion. You know the drill. Colin, could you uh, could you show me the quote from the athletic director the other day? Rick George. How many of you know who that is? Most of you don't. Let's be real. It's the Colorado athletic director. You don't have to know who Rick George is, though, because we know who he is for you. And it's this is not a where's Waldo. He's right on your screen right now. And if you're listening on podcast, I'm going to paper pop and I'm going to read you a quote courtesy of our Buff Zone 24-7 Sports Colorado outlet out there. Uh, This is the Colorado AD last week. Quote, we're members of the Pac-12. We're proud members of the Pac-12. And we've got to see where our media rights deal lands and where our conference goes. In a perfect world, we'd love to be in the Pac-12. But we also have to do what's right for Colorado at the end of the day. We'll evaluate things moving forward. I've had the staff translate that. And it translates roughly into, we out of here. That's what's about to happen in Colorado. I strongly believe they're going to the Big 12. Had been hearing this for weeks, and it's now starting to be, you can ask Jesse. I told him like a month ago. Jesse, well, pay no mind to that because he can't be seen on camera. AEW can put him on camera, as it turns out, but we can't. Uh, I told Jesse like a month ago, this is going down, man. Colorado's going, and they're not going alone. Now, here's the part I don't know. I don't really know who's going with them. I really believe Colorado's going to be on the move. And to give you a timeline, I think you're going to hear about this before this season starts. Like, they're not going to be in the Big 12 this year, but if I had to bet money, I would bet that Colorado announces they're going to be moving to the Big 12 next year before this season starts. So you can look at your calendar and realize that's a pretty truncated timetable. Everybody I've spoken to thinks 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, going to be pretty imminent. Maybe they'll have the news break at Big 12 Media Days, like like, uh, A&M had to find out about Texas and Oklahoma a couple of years ago. That was always a a fun replay to watch the next day. So, oh, I miss a misplaced my piece of paper here. This is going to be a big domino. The reason I'm actually talking about it tonight is not that it's just a big deal if Colorado leaves. I don't think that that would really keep you guys up at night. It's going to mean a domino effect. Because I don't really see a world where Colorado alone is moving. They've long been linked to the, you know, the four corners theory of it's Colorado and it's Utah and it's the Arizona schools, which does not constitute the four corners by the way, from a geographical perspective, it's just the region of the country they're in. I think that a lot of them are going. That's, that would be my guess. That is just a guess. Okay? There's guided information that Colorado's leaving. My guess is that they're not going alone. But that's one part of the, the domino picture here. The other part that we cannot know, but they can, is are they just moving in the best interest of Colorado? Are they moving because they think it's inevitable and they want to ride the wave instead of chase the wave? Or is all that true? And are they also privy to some information from Seattle? Or maybe privy to some information from Eugene? Might they have a little heads up that some premier members from the northern part of that Pac-12 conference may be moving on to a conference not named the Big 12? Maybe they're Big 10 bound. Maybe that's in the offing. No matter how you slice it, once this next round of dominoes falls, so too does the Pac-12. It'll still exist. I'm sure that they've got on speed dial. San Diego State already lined up and SMU, whoever it may be. Tulane, for all I know, lands out there. Just because you've got a conference doesn't mean you've got a power conference. And we're moving into a new playoff era. And here's the fallacy right now. And i gotta, I got to warn you, you know, you, you know I'm already wading into waters I don't care to be in, so just let that be stated until the end of time whenever I start talking about the expanded playoff. We're going to the... Sorry, sorry about that, Colin. We're going into this new playoff era. 
And we got a lot of realignment happening. There's a lot of uncertainty. We've written the map in such light pencil because we have to erase it. At any given point, things could be turned on their ear and, and everything starts from scratch. So in this new playoff era, we got 12 teams, right? Right, Josh. And we got half a dozen auto bids for the six highest ranked conference champs, right? Absolutely, Josh. And then you got six auto bids, right? Mm-hmm. Stop stating the obvious, Josh. Get to the point. Well, the point is, that's not an ironclad contract for the next two decades, guys. I don't know if you realize this. That's a two-year stopgap. That contract ends in 2026. And anytime you watch the show, and my tone gets a little more hushed, it's because I think I'm onto something. And I think the SEC sitting down there saying, yeah, six auto bids, that'll do for now. The Big Ten, yeah, six auto bids, all right. You know, we, we can figure that out. Frankly, I think they're more concerned with which media partner gets what chunk of the playoff revenue and playoff pie. I think that's what they're more concerned about. But eventually it's going to come down to format. And I'm telling you confidently, that I do not think the powers that be in those rooms are going to look at conferences like the Pac-12 continue to erode in terms of an already questionable product going downhill even further and say, hmm, well, our conference is 15 times more powerful than anyone else out here outside of the Big Ten and ditto in the Big Ten for the SEC. But yeah, why not still guarantee six auto bids to all these conference champs? Why not? Why not? There are a bunch of reasons why not. And they're right in front of your face. And so I wonder when we get to the time to negotiate that new playoff contract, if you think conference realignment's been a headache, if you think figuring out how many games the SEC is going to play on their conference schedule has been a headache, wait until you start hearing power players in the SEC and the Big Ten come to the realization that, wow, we're way better. We're way more powerful than these other folks. Why are we giving them anything? And then you'll really need to take a shower. Because you'll feel so gross listening to all that in context, it'll make the rest of this just seem like a normal June. And the other thing, and this is just kind of where my mind goes because it's inevitable, is if this does end up being the fate of the Pac-12, if it's not long for this world, and by this world I mean the, you know, the Power 5 world, if it's not long for this world, I feel the need to remind you there are several quality coaches out there. And two of them are leaving to go to the Big Ten, obviously, but that leaves several quality coaches out there. You see what Kalen DeBoer's doing? You see what Jonathan Smith's doing? You see what Dan Landing's doing? You see Jed Fish start to turn Arizona around? Kenny Dillingham just got his shot at Arizona State. You got Deion Sanders. Anyone ever heard of Deion Sanders? He's at Colorado. Are they all just going to stick around through the uncertainty? Now, if I'm right, a lot of them are on ships that are already headed elsewhere anyway, but if you're left behind... I mean, th think about that and think about how you have to manage your future. Think about the conversations that have to be happening between some of these guys and their agents. It's on one hand, it's an interesting time if you're not involved, but it's got to be a nightmare if you are involved uh, because there's so much that's out of your hands. Coaches are OK with how hard the job is. As long as a majority of the most difficult stuff is within their control. But now you've inserted like 37 new factors outside of their control and they don't even have expertise in it. Like these coaches won't find out much before the rest of us will if some of this is happening. Because those decisions are happening by people who wear bow ties across campus. They're, they're not happening in, in the dark film room, projectors on, you got the grease board back here. That's not where that kind of plan's drawn up, friends. And I think they know it. And that's why there's a lot of uneasiness when you talk to a lot of those coaches. Because I've never had a spring and summer where I've had more coaches ask me what I'm hearing. What do you think's going to happen? And I'm like, what do, you, what do you think I called you for? I'm trying to find out if you know anything. No one knows anything until they do. So the other thing to keep in mind is when that happens, it's not going to be a trickle. It's going to be like someone put, put unlimited amounts of sticks of dynamite on the dam and then they hit the red button and boom. And here it comes. One, one hour you got the Colorado news. The next hour you got a reaction move from an Arizona state followed closely by Arizona. And then you find out what Utah is going to do. And then all of a sudden rumblings out of the Pacific Northwest. Mount St. Helens, is that you? No, it's just Oregon. It's just Washington. They may be headed elsewhere. And meanwhile... You got George Klykoff down there saying, we'll get to it after we figure out our media rights deal. We'll get to it. No, too little, too late.